Good readings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, we are going to be making mochi. If you're not familiar with mochi, mochi is sticky rice that's been pounded to make this really great chewy dough. It's used in sweet applications, most often filled with sweetened red bean paste. It is delicious, savory as well. Actually, my favorite way to have it, I like it wrapped in a little bit of seaweed and then dipped in some soy sauce. Absolutely stinking smantastic. So if you're in Japan around the new year, you'll see lots of mochi and people enjoying mochi. It's a traditional food of that time of year, particularly kagami mochi, which has a beautiful shape. It's composed of two kind of chubby discs of white mochi. They're stacked on top of each other. You'll often see an orange on top. Directly translated, it means mirror mochi and is given as an offering and it is eaten during the new year. Now during the new year in Japan people do not do any work. You do lots of work beforehand in preparation for new year. You clean your house. You make lots of food to eat during Osechi or the new year but it is considered rude and somewhat bad luck to do any action during the first few days of the new year. Families gather together, they watch television, they eat the food that you've prepared beforehand, and it's a great time of year, and you eat mochi. And when we lived there, there was always a warning saying, particularly towards older people, to be careful not to choke on mochi because the rice is glutinous rice. It is sticky and then it's pounded and has a really great stretchy, chewy texture and it can be difficult to swallow. So every year there are warnings, warning particularly older people not to choke on their mochi. And sadly, people do die every year from eating New Year mochi. And on that grim note, today we're gonna to be making mochi using my Tiger Mochi Maker. This is my beautiful Tiger Mochi Maker. I have used it in a previous video before. I'll put a link down below to it in case you are curious. I made the Anko or sweetened bean paste version with this. Today we're going to be making a kitty mochi which is a mochi where you make the mochi dough and then you roll it out, allow it to cool, cut it, and then you toast it. And it does the most wonderful thing. It puffs up like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, just like marshmallow, but it takes on this really great nutty toasted flavor. It's my favorite way to have mochi. Then you dip it in some soy sauce and have it with seaweed. It is one of my favorite breakfasts, love it. So in celebration of New Year, I'm gonna make some today. So since the last time I used my mochi maker, it has seen some hard times. See this? So sad. So we had some work done in the basement and one of the workers toppled this over and, and it, it broke. But because this is wonderful, wonderful quality and craftsmanship, I was able to reorder a new lid, which went missing. And I also had to order a new impeller blade, which also went missing. So shout out to Tiger for making great quality products with appliances with replaceable parts. I love that. So let me show you how to make mochi with the mochi machine. Some of you may be thinking, why do you need a unitasker, a machine that only does one thing for making mochi? Well, traditionally it is a very laborious process. You cook your rice till it's nice and cooked and soft, and then you have to pound it nutritionally with these great big wooden mallets in a big mortar. Two people have to do it. Usually someone folds the rice while the other one pounds, and it is a lot of work. And so we're gonna use the machine to knead our cooked rice into our beautiful chewy mochi dough. So that's why you need a unitasker. So here is our machine. And I love that it's got very simple buttons. It seems very analog, right? So that's our power button, steam and pound. And here's our lid, which also serves as a dish. We'll use that later. A wooden rolling pin to help us roll the dough, a lid, and this is the cooking basket. Comes with a measuring cup and a blade for kneading. It also comes with another blade for making miso, which I would love to do at some point. But so down here is the spindle where the impeller attaches, but this is also where the water goes. So this is the rice I'll be using today. This is special sweet glutinous rice. You must use this type of mochi rice, otherwise your mochi won't be sticky and chewy. It is special because it is short grained. So if you look at it, it's very kind of round and ovate rather than kind of long, and it is sticky when cooked. I'm using this brand. This is by Koto Farms. This is grown in the U.S. It's Shochikubai, great 
sticky rice by a long-standing rice growing family. So last night I measured seven rice cooker cups of rice and washed it thoroughly and then let it soak overnight. That's really important for sticky rice. It's important that it hydrates so that when it steams, it steams nice and softly and there are no hard bits in the middle. So that's what I have here. I have my soaked rice and then I've got it in a colander draining any excess water. So now we're going to add 400 milliliters of water directly into the bottom of this. Then we're gonna add our basket. And this is an important step. Don't forget to put the impeller blade. I've done that before after I put in the rice and then I had to dump it. You know, it's a problem. So put your blade in like that. Now we'll add our drained rice into the basket. So what I love about this machine is that it both cooks it and pounds it or kneads it. So now we're going to just flatten it out so it's even. Now we're gonna place the lid on. Now we're gonna push the steam button. There we go. Light is on. So this will take about 35 minutes to steam and the buzzer will go off. It has a very analog sounding buzzer. It goes <laughs> kind of just drones on and on not a beep it's not very pleasant but it tells you when it is ready then we'll push the pound button and then it will churn it and knead it and we'll knead it for about 10 minutes and then our mochi dough will be ready so we can use it for any application we like but this time we're going to be making kitty mochi Alrighty, my lovelies i will see you in about half an hour once the rice is cooked all right see you a little bit see all right, I guess it's ready. <laughs> See what I mean? Terrible analog buzzing sound, but definitely tells you when it's done. Okay, so the steaming part is done. Let me show you what the rice looks like. Dun, 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 dun. Look at that. Beautifully cooked rice. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Steamy and hot. So now we are going to knead this into our mochi dough. And we simply do that by pushing this button right here. This is the pound button. Ready? Boom. And look what happens. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's shaking the entire counter here. But that little blade in the bottom, which they call the impeller, is turning and then that pounds the rice into a sticky paste, sticky, chewy paste. We want it to be smooth and very chewy and stretchy. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Oh, I gotta see from this side. It's like it's alive. I'm gonna let this go for about 10 minutes. And when it's shiny and smooth and round, we can move on to the next step. Alrighty, my lovelies, we are ready to move on to the next step of making our kitty mochi. So I've got some heat gloves here and I'm gonna take our basket out. Thank you for your service, Mr. Machine. And I'm gonna dampen this just a little bit. Now we're going to dump our mochi right into the lid. And because this is non-stick, it should just come out. It should, it should. And if it doesn't, we can coax it out. Here we go. Look at that. <laughs> Very cool. Make sure we take out our plastic impeller. This is really hot, so, but I can just get a good grip on it. Look how stretchy it is, isn't it amazing? I once made a vegan faux mozzarella cheese using mochi and it worked great. The flavor, of course, didn't taste like mozzarella cheese, but the stretchy behavior, quite similar. Okay, so look how sticky that is. Isn't that amazing that this is just rice, right? This is freshly made mochi and we can shape these into little dumplings. We can eat this right away. But what I wanna make is kitty mochi and that requires it to be cooled and then cut. So I'm gonna take a plastic bag, this is a gallon size, and I'm gonna turn it inside out, and then place the mochi in the bag. 
Oops. Pretty sticky. Doing my best to get it into the bag. There we go. Very sticky stuff and hot. But I can manage it, I think, without burning myself. Okay. Okay. So now the hot mochi dough is in there. And I'm going to zip this up and we're going to remove some air. And we want to flatten this out. So zip this up, but leave a little bit of an opening so that the air can escape as we press it. Now we're going to work this just like we would work putty or slime play-doh. And we're just going to mush it into a layer. And this is where we can use the provided rolling pin and roll it into the corners. And what I have found is that sometimes you get an air bubble in the corners and it won't want to get into the corners. So at that point we take a little knife and we might have to prick a hole in the corner like that, like that, just so that we can force the dough into the corners. So this is the time to manipulate it because as the rice cools, it will stiffen and it will not go to the places that you want it to. So this is the time to shape it. All right, now we make sure it's zipped up so that the mochi doesn't dry out. So now we're gonna let this cool to room temperature and then you can chill it. And then we can move on to the next step, which is this. This is the mochi completely cooled and look how rigid it is. Hard and stiff and ready to be cut. So next we're gonna cut our kiri mochi. I should mention if you don't have a mochi maker or want to go through the whole process of making mochi, you can buy kiri mochi already at this stage, already cut for you. It comes in little blocks that are individually wrapped. I'll put a link to it down below. I've purchased it from Amazon before, but it saves you a lot of work. You can keep them in your pantry, they're shelf stable. After this step of cutting it, I like to bag it up and put it in the freezer and then take it out as I need it. I can take it directly out of the freezer and place it in the toaster it's ready to go. So yeah, you can still have kiri mochi without making it. So I'm just going to cut it into about, let's say this is like one and a half inch strips. And I just cut it right through the plastic. Feel free to take it out of the bag if you like, but I've found that this is a really easy way to do it. Just cut it all the way through. And it's pretty tough to cut through. Maybe it's easier to cut this way. Remember, we have plastic on here, so now we're going to remove that before we eat it. <laughs> Next, we're going to cut it into little blocks. So, when you buy it at the supermarket, it'll be individually wrapped, and they're about this size. I like to cut it even further into smaller pieces, so that each serving is kind of bite-sized. So, and cut it even smaller, like this remove the plastic. So this is one of my kids' favoriteest little treats. So I keep a bag of these in the freezer and they can make the snack for themselves. They just take out how many blocks they want, toast them up and have them as an after school snack. So delicious. So I think that's good for now. And now what we're gonna do is get a baking tray. I have a little bit of parchment paper, but you can do it without parchment paper and place our little mochi squares on the paper. And then we're gonna toast it for four to six minutes in your toaster oven, or you can place it underneath your broiler if you don't have a toaster oven. But that's all you need to do. Oh, or if you have an air fryer, that works great too. So I'm gonna make a big batch of those. Don't they look great? Watch what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna pop these into my toaster oven and toast four to six minutes or until they puff up and get golden and toasty. And then we'll finally give our homemade kirimoshi a taste. Alrighty, see you in a little bit.
Well, Riley lovelies, now our kitty mochi are finally ready to be eaten. Look at them, aren't they magical? Isn't that so cool how they poof up like that? I always love watching them right before they kind of pop. It's like they're alive. It's just so much fun. All right, and now it is the time to eat them. You can dip these in shoyu, which is just soy sauce, but I prefer tsuyu. Tsuyu is just soup base. It's got a little bit more for me, so this is what I like. Look at this little carrot dish, I love it. So look what happens when you add a little bit of soy sauce or tsuyu to it. How cute is that? See the little kitty up here? Okay, so now you can take your fingers. These are really hot, so I'm gonna use chopsticks, but let me show you what it looks like. Look at that. So there is some of the part that's gooey, but this part is hard. Can you hear that? That has the original kind of cube shape, and this is the hot molten mochi beneath it. Isn't that magical? Who thought of this? So now we dip that into here. A little bit of shoyu. Then I love to wrap it in a little bit of noi. Alrighty, here we go. Happy New Year. Itadakimasu. So good, so, so good. This expanded part right here is crunchy and light and thin, right? So you get a little bit of crunch, but this part is sticky and chewy. It has a marvelous texture and it's hot and by itself, very plain, but has a wonderful texture, just so chewy and bouncy with little crisp edges, but then dipped in sauce and wrapped in noi, it just becomes something so utterly fantastic. Mmm, so good. The two adds a savory, salty component that's a little bit briny and soy-based, complements the seaweed so well, and the crisp, light, paper-light -like texture of the noi goes so well, with the crispy edges of the kirimochi. So good, but my, yeah, it's that combination of textures, the chewy and the crispy, salty, flaky, mm, so good. So you can still make fresh mochi from rice without a mochi maker. You would steam your rice just like I did in a bamboo steamer, soak it first, and then you would have to pound it. You can use a mortar and pestle. You'd need a large one. I don't think a food processor would have enough torque, but I would imagine a strong KitchenAid mixture might be able to do it with a dough hook. Don't quote me on that, but I imagine if you Google it, you might find something that would approximate that. Another option, if you want to make the filled mochis, the kind that have ice cream in them or sweet red bean paste inside them, you can use mochiko, which is rice flour, mochi rice flour. So it's pulverized rice flour and you can use that and add water and knead it into a dough so you don't have to use the whole grain. Both of them are fun and accessible, but this one is my favorite. And as I said, you can still buy kitty mochi from the grocery store. Mm-hmm, mm, so good. Mm. Particularly good if you need something gluten-free too. Oh man. Oh, it is. You just can't stop eating them. So stinking delicious. Alrighty, my lovelies. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video. Subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Lou, take care. Bye. <gasps> Just one more. Okay. Look. Mm. 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 Mm.